Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. The book of Acts today, Acts chapter 28, beginning in verse 11, and today we will definitely finish the book of Acts. So get your Bible, open it up to Acts chapter 28. You can study all of the Bible with me just exactly as we are going to do today at the Scripture Verse by Verse website which is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse at thebibleversebyverse.com. All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 11. Acts 28, and after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. These twin gods are better known maybe to us as Gemini, known to people of my generation as the space program that preceded Apollo, and followed Mercury. Gemini, the space program, the space capsules that carried two astronauts. And that is why it is called Gemini. Gemini refers to two. And so these twin gods uh, are better known to us, as I said, as Gemini. And people believed that these twin gods protected sailors. Maybe that's why they chose it as a name for the uh, space program too. But the fact is, I hope they were just being facetious when they did that. I think so. Back in the 60s, they would have. Pagans have gods for everything though, because they don't believe that any one of their gods are big enough, powerful enough to handle everything by themselves. That's why there's so many of them. You've got to have a God for every particular thing, you see, because they're not big enough and strong enough to handle everything like the real God is. 12. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. <clears throat> and from thence, we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Petoli. This time, the sailing was much easier than the last time. The wind was blowing in the right direction, and as a result, they made good time. They arrived at a place called Petoli, which was a port of Rome, 14, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. Paul found some Christians in that place, which was a long way from Israel, long way from Israel. You say, well, how did the message of Christ reach such a faraway place? Well, it turns out that some of the Jews who were in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and were saved on that day were from this area. So they returned home, they spread the message of Christ, and people were getting saved. 15. And from thence, when the brethren, those brethren from Rome, heard us, They came to meet us as far as Appii Forum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Paul had never met these Christians before, but their kindness was an encouragement to him. Christians have a real bond with other Christians, even if you've never met them before, even if you're from some faraway place. That bond is the Holy Spirit. And that bond that you feel with other Christians who love Jesus is proof that the Holy Spirit is in you. 16. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier who kept him. Paul was under house arrest. And uh, he, he was not in prison, but he was guarded all the time. God allowed Paul to be guarded 
by Roman soldiers. You say, what a horrible thing for Paul. What a terrible thing. How unjust, possibly, I suppose. But you know what? That wasn't the issue. God was in control. Those soldiers who guarded Paul got an earful. Believe me, they heard about Christ, and many of them got saved as a result. They never would have been saved. If Paul had not been falsely accused, falsely arrested, falsely detained, falsely shipped off to Rome to stand before Caesar when he should have been released instead and guarded 24 hours a day by soldiers. You, you talk about God being in control of everything, even those things that are unpleasant that come into our life, those things that are beyond our control. Don't think that God isn't in control of those things that you're not in control of. He is. And as a Christian, he parks you there for a reason so that you can live for him and serve him in the midst of that. Verse 17. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem to the hands of the Romans. Notice verse 18, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of, for this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. In, in Rome, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul calls for a meeting of the Jewish rulers in order to present his case to them. And notice that he didn't dwell on the unfair treatment that he had been experiencing from, the fellow, fellow, from their fellow Jews back in Jerusalem. He didn't dwell on that. Instead, he talked about one thing, Jesus. He wanted these Jewish rulers to hear about Jesus. He knows that's why God has brought him to Rome. He's not folk. The other things are just peripheral issues to Paul. He's there in that situation, as unpleasant as it is, as unwanted as it is, he's there to be used by Jesus. And always remember this as a Christian, if we can't think of any other reason for being in a situation that we find ourselves in, I can tell you that one reason for sure is to pray for those among us and show them the holiness and the kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ and tell them about how to be saved through Christ. 21. <clears throat> and they said unto him, We neither receive letters out of Judea concerning you, neither any of the brethren who came showed or spoke any harm of you, but we desire to hear of you what you think. For as concerning this sect, talking about Christianity, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning until evening. And some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not, which is always the case. Probably most, probably most did not believe. That's usually the way it goes. But Paul taught, as he normally did, all that the Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah he taught that all those Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah were fulfilled in Christ. The Passover lamb was a picture of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The bronze servant that the Israelites looked to in the wilderness when they were bitten by snakes pointed to the work of Christ on the cross. The peace offerings in the Old Testament sacrificial system pictured the peace that Jesus provides between sinners and God. The fellowship offerings picture the fellowship that we can now have with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. The trespass offerings picture our forgiveness 
when we confess our sins as Christians. And on and on we could go for hours, which Paul probably did. Using all these Old Testament types and symbols of Christ, pointing them to Jesus Christ, who fulfilled every last one of them. And I'm sure he did a thorough job. 25, and when they, <clears throat> excuse me, and when they agreed not among themselves, that's because some believed Paul and some believed the word of God and some did not. When they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spoke the Holy Spirit by Isaiah the prophet unto the fathers. Notice, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing you shall hear and shall not understand and seeing you shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross and their eyes are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. And it's the same old story. These Jews in Rome react to Christ like many others react to him. Some believed, most did not. And this situation was very dangerous because their hearts had grown hard from reject, rejecting the truth. And now they're at the, at the point where they can't even see truth. That's what happens when you reject the truth. When you reject the truth that you understand the Bible is teaching is true because you don't like it, you are in danger of, of becoming hard in your heart. And eventually, if you continue doing that for, I don't know how long, could have been the last time that you harden your heart, that you'll never see the truth again. Your heart will become judicially hard and you will be unable to respond to the truth. That's the danger of rejecting the truth that you know is truth. I've told this story a, a long time ago, but and this happened a long time ago. I was in a man's house with his wife and we were talking about a particular, particular subject that he was interested in, in the Bible, an issue. And I can still see it because we were in his kitchen. I had my Bible open on his kitchen table. I talked to this man for five hours. It was a Saturday morning. I talked to this man for five hours about this issue. And I went over Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse. He finally stood up. He finally stood up. And he pointed at the Bible. And for those of you who might be watching this, I'll never forget it. He pointed at the Bible, and he kind of looked at it cockeyed and said, I know what that says, but it ain't right. And that's just how he said it. That must have happened 25, 30 years ago, and I still remember it all. I got up, took my Bible, walked out. I don't have time for people like that. He hardened his heart to the truth because he didn't like it. Too bad, mister, it ain't going away. And all it's going to do is harden your heart and you're going to end up in hell. That's the danger of doing that. 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Jews didn't want it? Fine. That's up to you. You don't want it? You religious leaders? Fine. That same message is going to the Gentiles though and they, they'll take it. There'll always be someone who will receive the mercy of God through Jesus Christ. If you're not interested in living for God and believing the Bible and accepting the salvation through Jesus Christ and fellowshipping with him, if you're not interested in doing that, God will find somebody else. 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasonings among themselves. In other words, they were discussing an awful lot about what Paul had said. 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, rented house, and received all who came in unto him. And I'm sure it's talking about Christians. Christians who wanted to talk about the Lord and learn about Jesus and he didn't turn anybody down, man. He was a he used this as an opportunity to teach the Christians in Rome and also to witness to the unsaved in Rome. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his 
own hired house and received all who came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So we see in this book of Acts that it ends with Paul remaining obedient to the Lord's command to boldly proclaim the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And actually, the book of Acts continues to this day, you know. You, you are the 29th chapter of the book of Acts, and so am I. Even though it's not written down, we're still in the 29th chapter of the book of Acts. This book continues because you and I as Christians, Christianity continues. The Acts of Christianity, the Acts of the Church, of Jesus Christ will not conclude until Jesus returns at the end of the age. And each one of us who know Christ are included somewhere in this story in the book of Acts as it continues. We either, we're either known in a positive way or a negative way, but we're there. And so I hope you've enjoyed the book of Acts. I had a good time, especially had a good time through the book of Acts this time around. I don't know why, but I did. So I hope you did as well. And I thank you for joining me. We'll move on to another book of the Bible as we always do. And I hope you can join me next time. And remember, you can study all of God's word with me verse by verse using my audio Bible messages. Just choose, click and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, working on the fifth at the Bible verse by verse.com. And it's there too, by the way. And if you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you certainly can be, and I'd appreciate it very much. Say, how do I become a part of this ministry, Mike? By praying for me in God's Word. The second you pray for me in God's Word, you become a very, very important part of Scripture Verse by Verse. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for you, for praying to you, to you for praying for me in the Word of God. And also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you, and so long.